Welcome back to This is Van Color. My name is Mo Amir. Our featured guest tonight is the author of the blockbuster book, Don't Call It a Cult, a definitive and evocative look at Nexium, the infamous multi-level marketing company that was actually an American cult with ties to Vancouver. She is the producer of the CBC podcast, Pressure Cooker, which explores how a BC couple, John Nuttall and Amanda Carodi, found themselves conspiring to bomb the BC legislature over Canada Day in 2013. But ultimately, even though they were found guilty by jury, the charges against them were stayed by the courts. One of my favorite investigative journalists in BC, she is Sarah Berman. Sarah, welcome back to the show. Oh my goodness. Hello. Thank you. It's good to to be here. It's good to be here. So let's get right into it. John and Amanda, this couple from BC, they conspired to bomb the BC legislature. They actually planted the bombs. A jury found them guilty, but a few few years later, a judge overturned that decision. This all happened years ago. Why are we still talking about John and Amanda? Right. So it's been almost a decade, uh, but just a couple weeks ago, they actually filed a lawsuit against the investigators, against the prosecutors, and against the federal and BC governments. Hmm. Uh, And they are alleging that they suffered a lot of harm because of this wrongful persecution. So they spent three years in jail. Uh, Obviously, there was a lot of emotional distress, both during the investigation and afterwards. And the stigma of this case has followed them for the rest of their lives. They don't even actually use the names John and Amanda anymore, Hmm. uh, in part because of this cloud of stigma around them. So that lawsuit just got filed. Uh, It just got served to uh, the defendants. And we'll see how that goes over the next couple of years. So there are going to be a lot of people who are watching this and go, they explicitly expressed the intention to carry out this act of terrorism. They planted the pressure cooker bombs themselves at the BC legislature. A jury found them guilty. So why are they not being found criminally responsible? How do they even have a case for a lawsuit against the RCMP and the governments? It's a great question. And I think that's what makes this this story so fascinating is because of the contradiction of it. Uh, But basically, uh, the BC government manufactured this crime. Uh, Hmm. That's what the judge found. Uh, And even though you see it on camera, them placing the bombs in the bushes, What you don't see is everything behind the cameras uh, that made that happen. So you had um, the RCMP buying them groceries, putting them up in hotels, driving them everywhere they needed to be, and doing a lot of the direction. I mean, John Nuttall was a very disorganized thinker. He had lots of ideas, including, you know, let's hijack a a nuclear submarine, or, you know, let's uh, try to fire rockets, you know, across the border to the U.S., or uh, let's hack some Israeli computers. So he, he was, you know, full of ideas, and basically the undercover operators, and there was a cast of them, all pushed him uh, towards something that was feasible, realistic, that they could control. Uh, And so because of all that coaxing, because they basically told him, you have to come back with a plan. You have to give us the evidence for this case. uh, That crossed a line. Um, They also were found to have used threats. There was actual, Hmm. you know, video evidence of John and Amanda fearing for their lives that this undercover officer who was posing as an al-Qaeda terrorist, uh, you know, that they could become loose ends and and therefore be offed and sent to the bottom of the ocean in cement galoshes. So So is the idea that if the RCMP was not involved, John and Amanda would have never carried out this plot? They would have never planted those bombs? Exactly. And part of the finding was just that they weren't capable of it, that they were actually so incompetent that this would have never happened. They would have never seen their ideas through. Uh, which is an interesting finding to come to. Um, but but basically, the RCMP did all of the legwork, all the logistics hmm. uh, to actually make this happen. And, and so that c- is considered manufacturing the crime. The word I feel like we haven't touched on is the word entrapment. We know that the courts overturned the guilty verdict or basically stayed the charges. But has anyone ruled officially that this was entrapment. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. So that's what the 2016 
2015 decision was a finding of entrapment and an abusive process uh, by the RCMP. And that's what made them able to walk free. Mm. Uh, although uh, very soon after they were hit with a peace bond. And so they still have some limitations on their on their movements. They're not allowed to go to the legislature anymore. Right. So when we talk about John and Amanda getting intertwined in this large plot that was effectively put on by the RCMP, what sort of manipulation tactics are we talking about? Like, how did they get coaxed into doing this? You did already mention ideas of threats, but aside from that, like, right. what made them do this? The judge was also looking at inducements. So the money that they put into, you know, it started with uh, John thinking this man was a gift from Allah because wow. he was, you know, buying him new clothes, buying him a hard drive, you know, giving him work, right? He hmm. was doing little deliveries uh, for the undercover officer. Uh, and so he was doing, in John's mind, everything he could to get John back on his feet and get him sort of the spiritual guidance he needed to find his way in the world. Um, and so that's that's a lot. Um, and so the religious manipulation, too, was something that really um, upset the judge. Uh, she called it out. And, and that will also be uh, part of the lawsuit, a charter challenge, because they weren't uh, their their right to um, practice the religion freely was allegedly violated. Right. Well, it's a fascinating case made even more fascinating by all these different levels. And I love what you're doing at Pressure Cooker to present this case to the public. It's really great. So thank, thank you so you. much tonight. Folks, she is one of my favorites. She is investigative journalist Sarah Berman. Make sure you find the CBC podcast Pressure Cooker wherever you listen to your podcast. I promise it's a heck of a listen. Now, after some business, let's get an expert to explain entrapment. What is it? How do we know if the police are engaged in entrapment in the course of a criminal investigation? Criminal defense lawyer Kyla Lee will explain all of it up next. I'm Mo Amir. This is Van Cullen.